Good evening and welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 25th of September. Two terrorists killed in encounter in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan administered Kashmir remains breeding ground for park back terrorist claim activist. And Nepal's newly anointed living goddess makes first public appearance. And now for all the details, security forces gunned down two terrorists in an encounter in support town of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province on Tuesday. The encounter came a day after three terrorists were killed in an anti-infiltration operation in Kupwara district of the province. Two terrorists were killed in a gunfight with security forces in Sopor town of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province on Tuesday. The encounter broke out after a joint team of Army, Special Operation Group and paramilitary CRPF cordoned off the area. Search operations were still underway till the RAS reports came in as there were reports of a third terrorist being trapped at the cordon. This came a day after security forces gunned down three terrorists following an infiltration bid in Kupwara district of the province. A security personnel also lost his life during the operation. This search operation ke dauran char se panch militants ko trap kiya gaya jo infiltrate karke andar aaye the. In mein se teen ki dead body jo hai retrieve ki ja chuki hai jinko medical legal formalities ke baad mein burial bhi inka ho chuka hai. India accuses Pakistan of regularly arming and infiltrating terrorists across the border as proxy to mount attacks on Indian soil. Pakistan denies the allegations. Indian Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj on Monday called upon world leaders to collectively fight against militancy while addressing the Nelson Mandela Peace Summit during the ongoing UNGA session in New York. She also held separate bilateral meetings with world leaders to boost diplomatic ties. Indian Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj on Monday attended the Mandela Peace Summit in United Nations organized to commemorate former South African President and anti-apartheid hero Nelson Mandela's birth centenary. Swaraj called upon world leaders to collectively fight against militancy and follow the path shown by Mandela. She underscored that the values of forgiveness, compassion and inclusiveness of society espoused by Mandela are needed now more than ever in the current turbulent times around the world. Excellencies, our world is it's still beset with conflicts, terror and hateful ideologies that are transcending borders and impacting our lives. No one should be allowed to support terror or its perpetration. Our collective survival as a global family requires that the wisdom of pioneering leaders such as Mandela should remain as our moral compass. Swaraj also held talks with her Moroccan counterpart Nasser Boreta on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly MIT. They discussed strengthening cooperation in areas of commerce, pharma, cyber security, defense and culture. During the meeting with her Spanish counterpart Josep Borrell Fontales, both the leaders explored ways to intensify ties and investment, renewable energy and tourism. She also met European Union High Representative Federica Mogherini and discussed issues related to trade and investment and exchanged views on the regional and global issues. Moving on, activists from Pakistan-administered Kashmir have said the illegally occupied region remains a breeding ground for Pakistan-backed terrorists. The activists made the remarks while highlighting the issues concerning them during an event on the sidelines of the ongoing UN session in Geneva. Political activists from Pakistan-administered Kashmir have expressed concerns over growing extremism and terrorist activities in their region. During an event on the sidelines of the UNHRC session in Geneva, the activists also highlighted the issues concerning the people in the illegally occupied region. They claim that there are terrorist camps running under the patronage of the state of Pakistan in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. 
ملک آزاد کشمیر جو ہے وہ برسا بر سے ایک ٹیررزم کا ہب بنا ہوا ہے جہاں ٹیررسٹ انفراسٹرکچر جو ہے وہ پاکستان کی ایجنسیوں نے پاکستان نے قائم کیا ہوا ہے فار دا ٹیررسٹ ایکٹیویٹیز آن دا ادر پارٹ آف کشمیر تو سو یہ لانچنگ پیڈ ہے India has long accused neighboring Pakistan of arming, training and infiltrating militants as proxy to mount attacks on Indian soil. New Delhi also accuses Islamabad of sheltering UN-designated terrorist Hafiz Saeed. Earlier this year, in a strict move, the US also announced suspension of all security assistance to Pakistan, blaming it for failing to tackle militancy on its soil. Meanwhile, protests were held recently in Pakistan-administered Kashmir against Islamabad's water war in the illegally occupied region. Locals blamed that Pakistan has been diverting the waters from the Neelam River to its much-favoured Punjab province, depriving the public of their most basic right. Massive protests were carried out in Muzaffarabad city of Pakistan administered Kashmir against Islamabad's complicity in destroying the natural habitat, wildlife and essentially the life and livelihood of the common people. Pakistan, which has been misruling the region for more than seven decades, is now depriving the common people of their water lifeline, the Neelam River, through an elaborate scheme which has changed the flow of the fresh water from the mountains to Punjab province. A massive water crisis has built up of late, which has forced the people to either live in uninhabitable conditions or move to other places. So, what is the more effect of this? When there is no water, then the amount of people who are aware of it, where will they come from? The major source of water was the water of the river. And the water of the river was finished. So, now the river of the river is finished. So, the river of the river is finished. So, the river of the river is finished. So, the river of the river is finished. और वो एक गंदे नाले की शक्ल इख्तियार कर गया है The Neelam Jhelum power project which was built at the pretext of bringing prosperity to the region has left the people deprived of basic human need water Even the monsoon waters were not able to charge the Neelam river as the water from the catchment areas has also been diverted to Punjab And in news from Afghanistan, Gulbuddin Hekmatyar, leader of Afghanistan's Hizbi Islami party on Monday said Taliban and Daesh are the same and only their flags are different. Hekmatyar, a former Afghan warlord, had earlier said that any insurgent group that refuses to accept peace is an enemy of Islam and the Afghan people. Afghanistan Hizb-e Islami party leader Gulbuddin Hekmatyar on Monday said Taliban and Daesh are the same and only their flags differ. Hekmatyar, a former warlord, made the remarks during a meeting with residents of eastern Nangarhar province. Speaking at the gathering, he also criticized security forces for their blind night raid operations that are affecting civilians. متاسفانه چې د دولت او د بارنی ځواکونو د وز تیارو تر وزر لاندې د خپل مرګرو په خلاف Last month, Hikmatyar had said that an insurgent group that continues the war and refused to accept peace is an enemy of Islam and the Afghan people. He had also criticized Taliban's attack on Ghazni city, especially attacks on residential areas. Moving on to news from Nepal, Trishna Shakya, Nepal's living goddess on Monday, made her first public appearance after being anointed in September last year. The appearance was made on the occasion of an annual traditional festival in the country. A huge crowd gathered on Monday in Nepal when the country's first living goddess, Trisha Shakya, made her first public appearance after being anointed in September last year. She made the public appearance on the occasion of Indra Jatra, a traditional festival observed to worship Devraj Indra, the goddess of rains and good harvest. Various cultural shows led by scores of youths were also staged in the premises of an ancient palace on the occasion. Nepal has a tradition of worshipping a girl from the Nevar community as a Kumari after she undergoes various religious tests. The successor to a Kumari is chosen when she is about to attain puberty. 
Despite criticism, the practice has continued. In 2008, Nepal's Supreme Court ruled out that Kumari must be given an education inside her residence and be allowed to sit for exams. The Holy Shrine of Sarnath in India's northern Uttar Pradesh province is attracting tourists and devotees from across the globe. The Buddhist devotees visit the shrine in search of enlightenment and to seek blessings of Lord Buddha. Devotees and tourists hailing from various parts of the country and abroad throng Buddhist pilgrimage Sarnath in India's northern Uttar Pradesh province throughout the year to seek blessings of Lord Buddha. Sarnath is one of the holy places associated with the life of Lord Buddha. It is the place where Buddha delivered his first sermons to his five disciples after attaining enlightenment. The yearly football also provides locals a source of income as majority of them rely on handicraft and sculpting business for their livelihood. Our sadhana plays very important role in the Buddhist uh, people because uh, this is the holy place or sacred place where our uh, Buddha preached the first sermon to five disciples, five of his disciples. So. How many days? With its history and rich cultural heritage, Sarnad attracts hundreds of people and Buddha followers from across the globe who travel to the holy shrine in search of enlightenment. Hindus from different parts of the country gathered in India's eastern Gaya city on Tuesday to pay homage to the departed souls of their ancestors. They offered special prayers and food items as part of the traditional rituals to free the departed souls from the cycle of life and death. Devout Hindus in India's eastern Gaya city on Monday perform rituals to pay homage and pray for the well-being of their souls of their ancestors on the occasion of Pitra Paksh or Fortnight of Ancestors. Devotees offered prayers and special food items to their ancestors on the banks of Palgu River as part of the age-old rituals to free the departed souls from the cycle of life and death. In Hinduism, Pitra Paksh is considered an inauspicious time to start the new ventures or buy anything new, given the death rites performed during the ceremony known as Shrad. ये जो पितरी पक्ष जो श्राद्ध का जो समय है, इसको बहुत धर्म का स्थान है। गया श्राद्ध करने से मरे हुए प्राणियों की पितर आत्मा की शांति होता है और ये स्वर्ग गति को प्राप्त करते हैं। और इनके जो भी फैमिली से जो करते हैं, उनके परिवार का धन धान की वृद्धि होती है, घर में सुख शांति आता है, बाल बच्चों को ऊपर में भगवान का आशीर्वाद बना रहता है, इनसे उनकी वृद्धि होती है। According to the Hindu tradition, Pitra Paksh is a 16 lunar day period. It falls in the Hindu lunar month of Bhadrapada, beginning with the full moon night that occurs immediately after 10 days festival of Ganesh Chaturthi and ends with the new moon night. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Two terrorists killed in encounter in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan-administered Kashmir remains breeding ground for park-backed terrorist claim activist. And Nepal's newly anointed living goddess makes first public appearance. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.